election coming up on June 24th of next year. Now, why is Be More News making so much noise about it? Why are we having a community meeting, for instance, uh, this Thursday at Sharon Baptist Church, the finest church in all the land, Reverend A.C. D. Vaughn? We're having a community meeting uh, about next year's election because there's redistricting that has occurred and so much has changed. In the studio to talk about uh, something related is Clarence Lamb. You're running for House of Delegates in the in Anne Arundel County? In Howard County and Baltimore County. Howard County and Baltimore County. Okay, right. and what district is that? That's District 12. It has parts of Columbia, Cadesville, Arbutus, Halthorpe, Elkbridge, Lansdowne, Baltimore Highlands. Seems like you know that community. I am trying to get to know it as well as I can. You are a physician? I'm a physician at Johns Hopkins, and uh, there's only one other physician in the House of Delegates. Dan Morheim. Dan Morheim, that's right. The one and only. We love Dr. Dan. <laughs> and we're hoping to get more uh, doctors down to the House. I think uh, it's useful to have a, a spectrum of uh, perspectives in the House, and it's good to have another doc in the House. Mm -hmm. You're a Chinese-American? I'm Chinese-American, but I was born in uh, Pennsylvania. My parents are from Hong Kong, my, uh, at Hong Kong and Taiwan. You know, I did my graduate, uh, my first thesis on Hong Kong, the reversion to uh, back to China after 150 years of the British. That's right. It's uh, it's an interesting place. Uh, there's a lot going on there, and it's got a very unique history because of its uh, relationship with uh, the British and and uh, China itself. My my uh, thesis was rather unpopular at the time, but I was proven right. What the West said that. China would ruin Hong Kong. Do you remember? I do remember that, yeah. They talked mad trash against China. They did. They did. China's actually taken a pretty hands-off approach to Hong Kong, which I think is good since, uh, since Hong Kong has been given back to China. Um, and that's actually benefited the, the Chinese and benefited those who live in Hong Kong. If you ask me, I'm going to tell you what the rest, of, uh, the rest of what I put in the thesis, that China is the new hegemon, the new world power. I know they're competing against the U.S. and uh, we need to make sure that if the they US lend in the strong. U.S. money, they beat the U.S. <laughs> I don't know, you know, math is basic. They beat, they won. <laughs> they are putting more money into the U.S. So we need to make sure that we actually reinvest in our own infrastructure, our own economy, foster our own jobs. Um, so I think we need, we in the U.S. need to step up and make sure that we reinvest in our country. Why are you running for the House of Delegates? I'm running for the House of Delegates because I think we need to have a good progressive voice in Annapolis to represent the area. I, I get scared when I start hearing these terms, progressive, <laughs> liberal, yeah. uh, conservative. Either love people or you don't. So what does progressive mean in your book? Progressive means that we care about people. We care about the people who don't have the resources to to uh, get up in, in the, the chain. Uh, we care about making sure that people have good jobs, that people have a livable wage, that businesses are able to thrive, that people are able to live their lives in a way that's uh, fair and equitable to everybody and, and that we don't entrench on people's rights. You say businesses and their ability to thrive. Yeah. Over the past 10, 20, 30, 40 years, that's increasingly meant going overseas to get cheaper labor. Mm -hmm. i.e. India, China, etc. Right. And I don't think we, we need to necessarily foster businesses to go overseas and to outsource. I think what we need to do is, is uh, reinvest in Maryland's own businesses. So there are a lot of small businesses that are the engine of the economy, particularly here in Maryland. And I think we need to reinvest in them, give them tax credits, make sure that they stay in Maryland, make sure they stay in the U.S., uh, create jobs for other Marylanders. I'm a little concerned about tax credits. I get a tax bill. Matter of fact, it's in uh, Be More News' email newsletter. Mm -hmm. Water taxes. The water bill. That seems like a tax. Going up 37%. Yeah. I think that's... Uh, and I'm not asking you to take a stance on it, but I'm <laughs> just saying uh, they taxing Joe Blow Citizen, right. making Baltimore virtually impossible to, to afford. But yet entities like these big-time hospitals, you might have mentioned one of them, I don't know that their contribution to making this city run is fair, is the same as right. the weight put on Joe Blow Citizen. And that's why I think we need to focus on small businesses and Maryland companies um, like Be More News um, that are based here in Baltimore, uh, make sure that they are able to continue to 
uh, hire more folks that live in the area, um, are able to contribute back to the economy. We don't need to necessarily chip in with tax credits to places like Northrop Grumman or big industries that are not necessarily based we in need, We We need them, but my concern is that we give them so much and yet we tax Joe Blow citizen. Right. And so if we can if we can lessen the burden on Joe Blow citizen or folks Why well, they just go in their coffers and kick out the rent like everybody else? You know, I think sometimes uh, some of the larger businesses need to step up and uh, make sure that, that we can continue to foster the small businesses because those are really the engines here of the economy here in Maryland. So places like Be More News, um, local businesses, mom and pop shops along Catonsville and Columbia. These are the people that hire people from those the are community. These the people that hire people. Uh, in, in my community, incarceration is a major impediment to the development of the overall community. This country incarcerates one-fourth of the world's inmates. I haven't checked, but if we incarcerate one-fourth of the world's inmates, yet we are one-fifth the size of China, something is disproportionately, fundamentally wrong. I think that there is something wrong. I think we take the easy way out, and uh, the first thing that we do is incarcerate people, and we don't help uh, rehabilitate them into the, into the community afterwards. Uh, that's why we spend so much money on jails and so little on rehabilitation of uh, reintegrating folks who are in jails back into the economy um, and back into the community. I think it's, it's a mistake. And uh, we take the easy way out, and the society has taken the easy way out because it's easy just to put them, lock them up somewhere where you don't see them and uh, forget about them. And I don't think that's the way that we should go. Now they're having sex with the jail guards making babies. That's right. Two, that's three, right. two three <laughs> guards. One, one guy, two, three guards impregnated. Right, right, and four four folks uh, impregnated, thirteen guards uh, charged. I think it's a, uh, you know, I think there's there are a lot of mistakes to be made in the Baltimore City Detention Center. I think there's a lot of uh, things that the legislature could do, and if I get there, I hope to be able to help uh, implement things like uh, making sure there's polygraph tests, uh, making sure there's proper funding and training of the guards. Uh, making you know, one thing, Mr. Lamb. Yeah, we used to have college available to inmates. Now, if you want people to rehab, or rehabilitate got to give them some incentive. They took that out of the prisons. I think that's a mistake. Like I said, I think we need to... Now we, sure got, now we have one-fourth of the world's inmates, and I believe over the past 20 years that has increased 700%. It's, it, it was 200,000 not long ago, and that's 2 million, and half of them look like me. Do you understand my concern? Oh, yeah, I understand your concern. It's easier for a child in my neighborhood to go to Central Booking than to go to Johns Hopkins. Right, and the people that get into Central Booking are, keep coming back. I mean, I've actually been in the Baltimore City Detention Center to talk, to talk to folks, and they see a lot of the same people coming in and out. And I think that's because we're not helping people stay out of uh, jail, get a good job, get an education, be able to... Uh, and some mental health uh, services. The president last, uh, well, last week, I think it was early last week, he uh, dubbed this month uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very uh, on point. I think that we need to reinvest. It's rampant. It, it is rampant. White people, too. Because right. anytime you're racist, you're sick. Yeah, yeah. And you see a lot of the mental health issues pop up with some of these uh, shootings. I mean, you see Virginia Tech, you see Newtown, um, you see the folks in California just last week where there was a shooting. You know, black people don't do the mass kind of killings like that. I'm just, I, <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. You ain't seen a black you're, guy you're just go off and, that's, that's, and, and uh, shoot off 40, 50 people. <laughs> just, you know. we, we know the difference. In, but, but, but crime is crime. Murder is murder. It's not like black people ain't no, you know, not like we're slouch when it comes to shooting. That's right. That's right. But, you know, I think we need to make sure we, we help out folks that need the help. And that's, that means mental health uh, help. That means mental health training for healthcare professionals. That means making sure that people that need the help can, can get an appointment with the doctor, can get their medications, can get counseling. Mm -hmm. Why do you, uh, you know, give me some of the legislation you want to push. So the legislation that I want to push. And, uh, and let me just say, I've talked to a lot of candidates. And when this question comes about, many people are clueless. They have no idea of what legislation they want to push. And after all, isn't that the job of a legislator? That is. That's why I have an answer for all of that. I think we, as a physician, I think it's important to, to make sure that health care is well funded. There's a lot of changes coming in through the Affordable Care Act that take place uh, next year. And we need to make sure that the legislature funds those things like health care um, exchanges, um, you know, making sure that we fund Medicaid. 
Um, and so there's a lot of health care issues that I think the legislature can properly fund and make sure that there's oversight over. You know, they talk about health care exchanges like it's Travelocity, where people can just go up on there and bring, bring down their benefits and premiums and pick out what they want and what they need. It's confusing for physicians. It's going to be confusing for a lot of people who don't have health insurance or are underinsured. Um, it's not going to be as easy as Travelocity. And so we need to make sure there are programs out there for those folks to be able to help plug into the health care exchanges. This is great to create an exchange, but if people don't know how to get into there, that's going to be a problem. Uh, the other issues are transportation. We just passed a gas tax last year, for better or worse. I think it's going to help bring a lot of uh, money into the state to reinvest in our roads. Taxing you know, poor people. I tell you, man, you'll make Baltimore virtually impossible for anybody except the rich. I think uh, we need to make sure that we, we reinvest in our roads to make sure that they have uh, uh, a good transportation network because all of us use transportation. We, none of us want to be locked up in, in gridlock on the Beltway, which we see every day um, on 83, 95. Uh, that doesn't help businesses. It doesn't help jobs. It doesn't help families. You know, you're taking time away from families. Uh, and we need to make sure that we invest in our roads. So uh, education is another concern. Uh, in my district, there's going to be CCBC in Catonsville, um, Howard Community College, and also UMBC. Uh, you know, the DREAM Act was just passed last year that's going to funnel a lot of people into the community college system. They're already at the max because a lot of the uh, folks are using that as feeder areas for uh, the economy having gone down a couple years ago and they're using that as an entry point to higher ed. But we need to make sure that we continue uh, funding uh, our community colleges and make sure we reinvest in those institutions. So you, you're not shy with words. How can people get in touch with you, Clarence Lamb? candidate for the House of Delegates. They can always come to my website where there's more information about me and more information about the policies and what I stand for. That's www.clarencelam.com.